actually, uh, one of the tutorial things, like, that, uh, did you, do you ever watch Igoraptor's, uh, sequelitis? He made, like, a few of them. Yeah. 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 The, that uh, was, that was one of my early inspirations for a lot of the stuff that I do. Yeah. And I, I, I know it was the same for a lot of people. I really like how he points out that some of the best ways to do a tutorial is using a diegetic tutorial, which just hints at you. Like, how am I gonna get up here? Can I, like, jump on the wall? I can! So that's a mechanic. Where they, like, tell you stuff that uh, influence you to play. Right. That kind of diegetic information. Like, and it gives you, like, there's the entire uh, intro level, just which is just a tutorial, but they don't tell you anything about it. But you also can't do that with some games like this. Okay, so I can just so. abandon my party for monsters themselves? Oh yeah, you can. My own monsters that I powered up? Yeah. Wow, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Is there any but reason I'd want to? I don't think so. Do I get any more characters? Oh, because I can capture humanoids too. Yeah. So I can capture other characters as well. Right. I mean, that's an interesting way to... Uh, introduce a whole bunch of characters that you can play with and fight with and like reuse that mechanic of we've got all these monsters that fight us let's just turn let's take put them on the other side of the field and let the player play with them and let the player be in control of our own mechanics right alternatively it means that you can put humanoids on your side of the field without them having to have like dialogue and reasons why and you just captured them is why right. <laughs> It's a good explanation for all of that. I just realized one of the reasons this would be a good thing. Yeah? Because, like, the larger monsters have more hit points and stuff like that. Uh-huh. So, like, there are some times where someone does, like, you know, like a crazy amount of damage to you, like, in one hit. Mm-hmm. So, you have trouble, like, actually surviving that one hit. But if you have something with like three times your HP, Create a then you sphere. can survive it. A dress sphere for Nishorn, our animal, monster, yeah. gunner, thief, behemoth. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a huge swing. Uh, but this is this is when I when I first put in X2, the idea that this is a second X uh, is made off of it should, ideally, if you're doing a sequel like this correctly, as opposed to a sequel where you are uh, spending three years to um, reinvent an entire new engine and everything. If you're not rebuilding an engine, you should be able to put more resources and time and energy into the systems that are in your engine, which is like all this shit. Yeah. All of this stuff that we're getting tutorials for, that is systems directly in place into your the same engine. That's right. That's game design. And you can put more emphasis on your diegetic information, your story, right. your setting, your uh, all of the uh, extra things. And so that's what we've seen in the last, what, like half hour? Yeah. Just slammed all into one? Yeah. As opposed... Alternative, though, is that because it's a sequel, X2, uh, you're also not getting the same amount of funding. Right. As a full on. And that, it's, you're giving the, you're, you're like supposed to be the like JV. Uh, to give the varsity team more time to uh, make the next real sequel right. where they're redoing the entire engine and stuff. Well, it all depends on who you're, uh, who you're working for and how much they value sequels. For example, exactly. if you're working for a e or EA, they, a value e <laughs> EA. <laughs> they value sequels a lot more than originals. <laughs> Okay, got motivation stars, looking good. Some motivation stars will be something I'll have to look at. I like that, I like that you, as long as you feel you're good and you're looking good, then you can fight well. Yeah. It's a mechanic that reflects the soul. That's important. Aww. Aww. Shinra's Guide to Everything, and it's balance. What a... That is so weird. Yeah. You can you can, uh, you can can reject that as just being like, oh, it's just like Pokemon. But you'd miss the nuance of how does a Pokemon-esque collection mechanic map onto Final Fantasy. Yeah. 
like how does this affect Final Fantasy at a larger level? And that is, uh, at least to one extent, there's probably a bunch of other ways you could analyze this, because I think it's an important point. And they give me a Pokeball of each flavor. <laughs> uh, the important thing you could analyze with this is like, wow, this this changes uh, what my enemies look like and how I identify with them, because my friends are also my enemies. Yeah. It, it kind of humanizes it in a lot of ways, as opposed to us just being uh, beautiful 3D people uh, fighting the hordes and hordes of monsters for whatever reason. Now they're actually like on our side and we're like working with them and it's, it's so bizarre. Yeah. It's so cool. Uh, where should we go from here? I feel like re maybe mm. brother knows? Let's talk to brother. No, you know, please. There we go. It kind of goes against the diegetic nature of the monsters though. Oh yeah? Because the entire yeah. thing is that, uh, do you know uh, Goryo in uh, Shinto mythology? Goro? Goryo. Goryo. In Shinto mythology? No. Basically, uh, like you have uh, oh, different kind of spirits. Like you have the ancestor spirits. Uh, the Goryo are uh, spirits of people that died on timely deaths. Yeah. And so they have vengeance against those. Oh, they have jealousy of those that are living. That is how the fiends exist because people died uh, untimely deaths and they have jealousy for the living. Yep. So the mechanic that it's a way of under working, understanding death as a uh, on the analysis of life. Right. Okay. So the mechanic that the fiends are working with you, despite the whole diegetic that they're jealous of you. I'm missing something. Uh, you could go to the cabin. Is there something in the cabin? I don't remember if you're supposed to talk to that guy. Oh, we haven't been in the cabin yet. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. I th yeah. Doi. So, yeah. so what's your what's your point with uh, Goro? Uh, uh, what is it again? <laughs> uh, fiends are basically Goryo. Oh, Goryo, so, that's right. Uh, the entire thing is that they manifest into fiends because they're you jealous sure of the well? living. And so now they're working with no you while they're so jealous of you? Oh, I get it. I get what your point is. Yeah. Oh. Like there's uh Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm following. That is very similar. So, it's just... We've got some grenades. We picked up high potions off of people and we also got some accessories too. Oh, nice. Silver glasses, silver bracer. Yeah, I was that was a thieving machine. Oh cool. yeah, did you add a uh, festival list you. to your dress fears? Oh, no, that's the quit button. Your garment grid. Oh wait, garment grid. Alliteration is the yeah. first key. First steps. Yeah. And then you can put festival list into any of these two. Or into any of these. Oh. So yeah. So can any class be any other class then? Can I have Yuna be doing sword stuff? Yeah. And everyone can be dancing and stuff and Yeah. If you want them if you want all of them to be like quickly able to change between them, uh, make them all adjust adjacent to each other. Oh. So we've got you got the gunner, the warrior, songstress, thief, and festivalist. Yep. Party Absolutely. on. You're going to be getting uh, different kinds of grids later on that give bonuses. I don't know if I can change who's on what dress sphere right now, though. No, you can't. Um, you can? Wait, dress spheres or garment grids? Is what you mean. Nope. Oh, yep, yeah, you were supposed to talk to him. Brother's onto it. Uh, you can change the dress sphere that they still battle with. And then, if you don't change after that battle, I believe you stay on that dress pier. Okay. Yeah. Definitely know how to during battle, I just don't know how. Outside. 
outside of bound. Um, let's do it. I think it counts in the equip section. Okay. On the Gagazet. Ah, brother's so proud. I love it. <laughs> He's got so much pride in his work. Yeah. He's inspiring. He's a lot more uh, flamboyant. Yes. I was thinking, like, yeah, was the word what flamboyant word for that's this? But yeah, the best word to describe him. Yeah, he's everything. a lot more flamboyant in this game than in the previous one. Oh, does he show up in 10? Yeah. Okay. He's the pilot in that one, too. <laughs> Where's Sid at? This is his airship, right? Uh, it's, it's not ship. his airship. You'll see him later, though. City of the Dead. When the Faith disappeared, the clouds enshrouding the mountain began to thin and disperse. Revealing long forgotten ruins among its peaks. Wow. Hey, the rocks are floating. Yeah, this is a Don't different tell me airship gotta climb up that thing. than in the first one. No worries. How far did I'll you get in that one, anyways? Oh, uh, I did play 10, and I played about half of it. Oh, okay. Until I got a little fed up with the teenage <laughs> angst of it all. <laughs> I just kind of got, got bored of it. And I got to a point where I just kept dying over and over and was like, oh, do something else. You no! Know. Don't look down. Drama! <laughs> Didn't we just jump off of an airship? Yeah. And, like land here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now is a terrible time for some vertigo. He's Riku, please, you need to work with us right now. I find it more funny that Brother is more concerned with the words that she's using than the fact that they're in trouble. Hey, he's <laughs> trying to learn a language right now. Oh yeah, that's true. Like, this is important to him. Yeah, that's true. You know, what's going on? Why suddenly no equilibrium? Thanks, that was a little close. A little? Coming! We're here, everything's fine now. Nah, keep an eye on Rico. You got it. <laughs> Everyone's keeping an eye on Riku. There she goes. Bye, Riku. We'll miss you. Oh, by the way, jumping in Final Fantasy. That's the thing. There we go. You got to, like, time it right, it looks like. Uh, just at the edge. I mean, you can, like... And circle. So we're just using circle to jump around and stuff. Yeah. No way, man, there's a chest down there! You should completely skip the chest. Really? No. Oh. <laughs> if I'm saying something stupid, that's... Do not take my advice. <laughs> just a troll. Yes. Hey, you made it! There's a lot of oh, Yuna happening in this game. This yeah. Way. And I can see how it could be alienating to people. Because it's not always the same Yuna. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes Yuna is dropping uh, spiritual based exposition about. We're in Zamark. What was this? Zamarkin? What? Or Gigger? Giggerkin? Where are we at right now? We're on Gagazet. Gagazet. So we're at Ma Mount Gagazet, and Yuna's just dropping like spiritual based uh, exposition about Mount Gagazet at the very yeah. beginning of all this. Or she's dancing as a pop diva. Or she's yeah, falling off of stuff. And these are all a bunch of different Yunas. Yeah. And so I could definitely see where people uh, Think this still works? become alienated from a whole bunch of Yuna all at once. Yeah. 